Sam, can we get a throwback seltzer? Cheers, please. Okay. Welcome back, everyone, to a brand new Lush Life video. I'm your host. I'm staring into space. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to a brand new Lush Life video. I'm your host, Leon Lush. I'm joined here by the illustrious Mrs. Lush, who's having a laughing fit, and we haven't even started yet. Classic. As I'm you literally got laughing at myself, hey, staring into space. You guys watch this channel long enough, know that she laughs at the weirdest shit and then doesn't laugh at the funny stuff. So. Yes. So at least we got something out of her. This oh, video. you're definitely going to get some weird laughs out of me well, today. I don't know. This video is good. This is one you've been begging for. She saw it in the Begging. sidebar. Hasn't shut up about it because she's obsessed with dead bodies. I mean, she's got Come a couple on. in the shed. She keeps a few in the basement. Different levels of decomposition. Of course, I'm kidding. But there's this video called Mortician Answers Dead Body Questions. It's a wired video. Yeah, I saw it in the recommended and I was like, listen, dude, we have to. Hold on. I'm just, I can see the comments now about how you just hit saw. I saw it. Oh, forget it. I uh, know, it's a Boston thing. I say that too, I saw it. I think it's gonna be interesting. I mean, it popped, it got 12 million views in two months. So I imagine we'll get about eight or 9 million if we react to it. So here oh, we go. Okay. This guy looks like the perfect mortician. Like it's exactly how I'd expect a mortician to look. Studious, handsome, kind of like Clark Kentish, but hmm. like not quite as handsome as Clark Kentish. Oh, I don't know if I'd go handsome, but okay. I don't know if I'll talk about them all, but I got In a all nerdy sorts way. of fun blood draining devices. And this one is for closing mouths. What? Hi, I'm Victor M. Sweeney, and I'm a licensed funeral director and mortician, and this is Mortician Support. <laughs> Victor Sweeney. Question for morticians. When someone dies, do you remove their poo, or are we all buried with an unpooed poo? <laughs> First of all, what kind of question is that? It just sounded funny coming out of his mouth. I know. Do you remove their poo, or are we all buried with an unpooed poo? I've heard that when you die, typically you void what's in you. Yeah. Yeah, like, not every single time, I would say, from your, what I know, yeah, but- Your experience as a nurse. Often, yes, not always. That is such a good question. More often than not, your poo is up to you. Sometimes you, <laughs> you hear the myth that everybody uh, poos themselves okay, before wow, they die. That's not always the case. Sometimes it is. For my purposes, when I get someone back to the funeral home and I'm preparing them, um, if they have pooed, then I'll clean them up. If it's the case Thank that you. they start pooing when pressure starts to build up in the abdomen, then I stop what I'm doing, I clean them up. Typically what I'll do is, is I'll actually flush out the bowels with the hose. Because mm. the last yeah. thing you want to have happen is someone to start pooing and then to continue doing it when you can't control it. Just out of the gates here. It's a very necessary profession, obviously. Yes, yes. Could not be me. I could not handle this type of shit, dude. Yeah. Literally and figuratively. You're built different though. Like you're a nurse, you love that stuff. You I love know, getting in there like and like. It's one of those things that like, you don't, you don't know many people that are morticians. No. And I would be curious to I meet I bet one. their <laughs> sense of humor is very dark. Like it has to be kind of, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah would... Will my cat eat me when I die? Possibly? Hopefully. What? I think the short answer to that is yes. <laughs> I've heard of that happening from colleagues of mine. And as we all know, cats being inferior to dogs, they will do anything. They Yo, Victor brought the sass today. Yeah, he did. <laughs> First of all, is he joking about the yes? Like, are the cats, like, if you died and you started to decompose, would your cat really eat you? I don't ever that trust a cat, be, so. That, yeah, but they are definitely inferior to dogs. He's not wrong in that sense. How do morticians not want to chug the embalming fluid? <sighs> These look like they taste like Fruit Loops. They do taste like, like they look like those old, remember those little like I'll keg? Okay, they taste like it, you've tried taste. it. taste, like, you remember those little keg juices that we used oh, to yeah, grow up with? Oh yeah, the little um, jug or teeny, whatever the heck they're or called. What were the other ones too that had the twisty, jug, the, the wax jug. twisty ones? Kool-Aid things, they were Kool-Aid. They weren't Kool-Aid Yes, they were. Well, I really love the picture you have and I noticed you forgot the blue flavor. <laughs> Embalming fluid is really oh, colorful. Yes, I, sip but I can assure you, yeah. It is not tasty. It smells awful. Okay. One of the reasons that a lot of these fluids are, are maybe red or other colors is so that the embalmer knows what they are without having to maybe read the label. But you'll also notice that a couple of them are red. When we push the blood out of the body mm -hmm. in arterial Gotta embalming, we're pushing out a red fluid. So ideally, we want to put a red fluid back in. So we gain access to an artery. Uh, typically, we'll make an incision maybe in the neck or in the thigh, and then we'll also gain access to a vein. We open the artery. Must be nice to have no pressure. If you screw up <laughs> getting into the vein or the artery Whoops. that you need and it doesn't work, it's okay. Just cover yeah. it up. And we're going to use this arterial tube, something like this. So this goes down the artery, and then it's going to pump fluid through. Now your vein, we are going to open with either a large forceps or this device called a drain tube. It's a big boy. So this goes Holy down. Holy crap! I'm sorry, but this is so interesting. Like, you love this, don't I you? I love this. <laughs> this is the most interesting video we might ever have done on the YouTube Memes channel Memes from Mrs. Lush? Hell no. <laughs> Mortician questions? <laughs> 
you are a bit of a nerd when it comes to like science and medicine. <laughs> I wouldn't call this medicine, but it's kind well, of in the same vein a little bit. It's, it's definitely yeah. a science. Post-mortem medicine. Now I'm going on Google, looking up the weirdest stuff. What do dead bodies <laughs> smell? Not good. Not dead not bodies not smell all. awful. Not Rotting good. anything smells awful. Oh. We are hardwired to think that dead human bodies smell bad. And it's a smell you never forget. I myself, I went out to a nice restaurant to have some aged steak, and I couldn't do it. I love this username. What? This is a question oh, from Victor. Wait. You gotta expand on that. On I, that exactly. Answer. I want to hear more. Are you like full on vegan now because of it? Is he just joking about it? Like he just seems too many things that look like a dry aged ribeye. <laughs> what do morticians do with our organs <laughs> after guy. an embalming? What happens when they aren't donated? When we do embalming, all your organs just stay they inside your body. You can prepare them all internally. After we finish the arterial embalming. We have what's called the cavity embalming. We actually use what's called a trocar, and I, I have one here. Oh! It's a hollow point spear, essentially. Damn. And it hooks up to what we call an aspirator. So it's, oh, a, gosh. it's a vacuum, essentially. It sucks everything Insert out. this in the abdomen, and then try to puncture all the hollow organs, and yeah. then the vacuum will actually draw out all those nasty fluids. <sighs> this is a question from Soggy wow. Emma. Why are coffins so expensive, y'all? Just bury me raw. <laughs> well, Soggy Emma, that is uh, definitely an option. You can be buried in the ground without a casket. A lot of funeral homes uh, put substantial markups on their casket. And I think it's just a way to collect money on, on the tail end of a service, but just like a furniture store, which mm. would maybe mark up their uh, kitchen tables four times what they actually cost. I would guess that most caskets are marked up probably one and a half to two times what the wholesale cost is. You don't imagine going to a funeral and then putting- What would they cost to make? And then putting someone into the ground just raw. What, you lower them down on like the fucking strap thing, like just dangling? Yeah, you just like, chuck them in the hole. <laughs> you just give them the old, yeah. Bury me raw is a bit of a double Sorry, entendre. Well. I think she's got the hots for Vic there, and that was a little bit of a, oh. you never know. Oh. At least I do now. I feel like Victor's probably got like a weird fan club after this video. 12 million views. Um, yeah, he does. Yeah, he no has a fan club. Witty, kind of nerdy, dark, kind of dry sense of humor a little bit. I'm a little bit. obsessed. Question from Tiny Rain. Do morticians put a bra on you? Oh, yeah. If so, I would like my rotting corpse to not wear a bra and would like my ghost to be wandering <laughs> braless with poking nips. Well, <laughs> Tiny Rain, I don't know if there's much I can do about poking nips, but we do put bras on if the family requests. And the reality is I've probably put on more bras than I have taken off in my life. <laughs> Did I answer your question? <laughs> this is a question from- What a dork! Question from T. <sighs> okay. What foundation do funeral directors use to make dead people Look alive. Hey, the Jeffree Star palette? No, I'm gonna go ahead and say no. <laughs> no, you don't think so. Something the James Charles from Sephora, or no, oh, it was uh, it wasn't Sephora. Anymore. It was uh, Morph was the brand he was partnered oh. with, and they dropped it when he got accused of like trying to hit on a bunch of 15 year old boys or something. Okay, we won't get into that. Whoops, a daisies. <laughs> I wonder what Victor thinks about that. Question from mm. Lala. Approximately how much does a oh, mortician here we make? Go. Right to the it. minimum and the maximum. That's a good question. I really couldn't say what the minimum and maximum are. The average I've read in the country is about sixty-five thousand dollars a That's year. And it. talking to my other friends and colleagues, that seems to be about the average for my area as well. That's it. Sixty-five thousand dollars is no slouch, depending on what industry no, you're in. No, I know, but that, I just feel like it's a very. It's always the people that do some like, of the hardest work that get paid the least, skilled like skilled and hard te job. Teachers, morticians, first responders, like you know what I mean. I get it. Opia Dana, can you get half your body cremated and the other half buried? Do morticians do that? Asking for a friend. What? I have ah, never done that. Absolutely not. Never had any you just cut it right at the waist and do a viewing of the top half and then cremate the legs, obviously. Just pull up my chainsaw. I was gonna say, it's the stupidest question of all time. How do morticians handle their jobs without becoming emotional wrecks? Wow. That is a good question. Most morticians I know okay. are pretty normal people. There are times where it's emotional. So you do feel it, and there are maybe days you come home where you just feel done and you don't want to work or maybe do what you're doing anymore. But I think- I feel like it would be a reasonable thing to get accustomed to just dealing with people post-mortem, especially that since you, did, you know, didn't know them when they were alive. I would ask that question about like ER 
doctors, ER nurses, like having to deal with people constantly You're that are dying. Trying to keep them alive and trying they're dying. Trying to keep like them you. alive and then they're dying. That to me would be a hundred times much more yeah. emotionally difficult to deal with. Um, yep. Does anyone not feel that way about their job though? What, like you just like, done yeah, and don't want to do it anymore? Like, yeah, I'm dude, good. Any job ever, Victor, right? A little burnt out. <laughs> yeah. Dealing with all these dead people Working all day. With the man. Try dealing with what? alive people. I was going to say. They're way worse. <laughs> way worse, dude. Do you think uh, he talks to them? To the, dude, I'd put on like some Led Zeppelin, looking like yeah, dance around a little bit with them. You, you, gotta, you gotta just uh, liven it yeah. up a bit. This is a question from mm. Melody Jackson. Do morticians take makeup classes when getting their That's certifications? Hey. Yes, we do. I have a <laughs> four-year degree. I mean, at my college, we took courses on uh, what they call restorative art. So this would include things like art. makeup and coloring, but it would wow. also include things like putting people back together after accidents, sculpting oh, an ear if someone has lost an ear. Oh man, so I that's, way more that's, detail on that's that. a whole nother level of yeah. restorative yeah. art. Oh God, putting people back together after accidents. Well, I mean, that's terrible, like surgical dude. to me. So four year degree, he said, restorative art. That makes art. sense. I mean, just thinking about all I have to deal with. All right, and now no. I sound like an idiot. I'm like, oh, you can probably go to like a certification course. I'm like, no. I was, oh, I think the lungs are over here. I was getting ahead of myself. <laughs> Clearly there's a lot more that goes into giant, it. giant large or needle that's gonna <laughs> siphon their blood. Find the vein, find the artery. Like, hey, yeah, just just take a weekend certification. You can do this body <laughs> up nice. Maybe the reason I thought that is because I can't imagine getting done with high school and being like, hell yeah, let's go take a mortician degree or like a degree that allows, that's wild to me. Do morticians also give haircuts? Hmm. Anyone know one that can do a nice face? <laughs> yeah, lip boy. I do give haircuts every so often. Yeah. Lit boy. Say a body gets exhumed after two years. What should be the state of the body to be expected two to be? Two years. That's one of the interesting things about my job is that I never actually know what happens after burial. If we had an exhumation, I mean, you actually have to have a court order to yeah. open the vault and open the casket. Hmm. I've heard of cases where they have opened the casket and the body looks more or less unchanged. And this was maybe 50 years after what? the fact. And that's due to the embalming probably? Yeah. All that, which is, I guess, preserving everything. That's wild. Holy crap. I couldn't imagine that 50 years later and it's still just chilling. And that fingernail polish is still on. Nail's still on fleek, hun. Mrs. Lush is like, if I got exhumed 50 years after, my nails better be I want a French on, manicure. on point still. There's gotta be a couple of good comments down here. Oh, there has to be. I feel like you can relate to this. Don't be shy. Spill the name of this heavy moisturizer. I want to be prepared for this winter. <laughs> Dude, that's so funny. You asked this question. You go, I wish someone would have asked if he talks to the bodies. Yes. <laughs> right. Hey, Norma. Hey, Mrs. Looking Jones. Good today. Yeah. Oh, you shouldn't have Norma. Oh, Stop uh, I have it. more. I have like so many more questions. I just want to follow up. Is, he, is there any follow up? Does he have a channel? <laughs> this is my favorite video we've ever done. So if you need to know anything about my wife after all these years, <laughs> oh, she just man. told me, this is my favorite video I've ever done. Yeah. Oh. That's so funny. We've watched a lot Except of crazy for, stuff. Like the one when we got to taste test different Paytas. food because it oh. meant I got to eat snacks. Oh, what? The Christmas, <laughs> the Christmas food one? No, that was awful. That was bad Christmas oh, food. Oh, what one would we have? Um, Generic versus. Oh, those were good. The generic that was one of my versus the, the name brand. Yeah, that was good. But current day favorite. Here we are. Here we are. All right. Victor the Mortician has won over my wife's heart. And Victor, if you're out there. she is now leaving me for Victor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this with us. It was very I interesting. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Yes, <laughs> yes. And we're just so pumped. We've been talking about this for weeks. So pumped. Full of embalming. To fluid. see you, to just full of embalming fluid. And to see you next time on the oh, Lunch Live channel. Peace. See you guys. I can't stop. I want to talk to him.